we haven't been plugged in since Saturday. Oh my gosh, so this is your full size. How much does something like this cost? So they were pulling 7,000 watts continuous power yesterday and giggling for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Most people ask us if we do toy haulers. This one's actually a car hauler. I literally think they can take this thing to Mars. It's gonna work. <laughs> you're out where you wanna be, you're silent. It just makes the experience so much better. I have to stop you there. <laughs> a full size. So we are here at the Tampa Super Show and this RV has got to be one of the craziest RVs that we have seen yet. And so we wanted to show you guys because there's a lot of surprising things about this RV that we're learning. And from a cost perspective, we are blown away at actually how inexpensive that this really is. So I am here with Jack with Volta and Greg, Greg with, spacecraft. with Spacecraft. So the cool thing that I have to tell you about Spacecraft is Spacecraft is kind of like the OG when it comes to RV manufacturing because they have been doing this since the 60s and they have got it down. So this particular unit is a boondockers dream. And so tell us a little bit about that, Jack. Well, this thing is an energy off-grid machine. The energy system on board is one of the largest ever produced. So it's 108 kilowatt hours. Oh my gosh. What does that mean? Well, if you're in a 12 volt world and you always think amp hours, it's like right. 9,000 amp hours if you're talking 12 volt technology. And that's if it was never charged. That's, that's the if total you started energy. on a full charge, yep. depleted it down. 9,000 plus. We talk in kilowatt hours like modern EV. So this is 108 kilowatt hours. So this is more than a Tesla, right? A lot of energy on board. Couple that with over 10,000 watts of solar power on the roof. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So from the standpoint of living off grid, it was designed to live at least a month off of grid before needing to replenish. Now, tell me about this because we've done some boondocking and we're definitely like dipping into that world more. But the biggest thing for us when we boondock isn't the power as much as it is our water. So tell me about if this is designed to live a month off of grid. That's a great question. How much water do you put on this <laughs> what thing? Do you, what, so do, what have you got for your fresh water and your waste tanks and it's, everything it's else? It's also built for indefinite uh, water. So we've got 400 gallons of fresh water on the trailer, 400 gallons split between black, gray, and a galley tank. Um, and then on the truck, we also work with the company to help design the interaction between the, the tow vehicle and the trailer. There's going to be 120 gallons of fresh water and 120 gallons of black so they can egress with the black and bring fresh back so effectively they can live off grid forever. So is it like recycling your water almost? No, they have, they're going to have 120 gallon tanks um, on the trailer and then you gotcha. can transfer it between the, the trailer so and the you truck. Can, you can switch yeah. it out or Come whatever. Come on, hook it up take off the truck, don't have to break down. Wow. And yeah. we're looking at some of the new technology to basically dehumidify from the outside air and it'll go right into your uh, fresh tank. So you can just generate water out of it's the air. It's kind of like a water reclamation yep. type of system. When you have energy, you can do more. And that's some of the amazing parts is if you've got enough energy on board, you can do water recycling reclamations. Uh, you did a, a endless uh, recycling water purification yep. system. We did that in uh, 2020. Some of the technology that might be used on Mars someday has been in our trailer. <laughs> has been in the spacecraft. How appropriately? It's, it's like, awesome. <laughs> yes. You're very on brand with your your yeah. name there, obviously. So. Well, it's crafting space. So since we've been doing it for 60 years, we try to use every cubic inch, inside, outside, everywhere, um, to get most of our customers are full timers. So they want every inch available for what they need to live on, and that's what we do. And I love that because. One of the things that we've talked about on our channel so often is how RV manufacturers waste space. And from like a storage standpoint and an organization standpoint, one of the things that we're always doing is we're always looking for like, okay, how can we mod this if we have to mod this so that we have better storage or better use of that space? And so it sounds like you guys have got that kind of dialed in. Yeah, there's a few things inside that'll you'll probably be like, oh, okay, I want one. Yeah. Cool, all right. Talk to me about what's going on down here. Well, underneath, is where all the battery packs are stored. So this is the same technology coming from electric vehicles. Okay. Um, it's very high energy density, nickel-based technology. Okay. Um, lithium ion, of course. And there's four 27 kilowatt hour battery packs tied wow. together, running at 51 volts nominal. So it's not 12 volts, it's 51 volts. This gives you a lot more horsepower. This lets you do more stuff, charge faster. And then that's 108 thousand watt hours total. 
So if you got a thousand uh, watt hair dryer, right, you're gonna run it for a hundred plus hours. Oh my gosh, right? <laughs> that's like so. It's just you know, mind blowing to even uh, think about that because I know, just like even you know with our lithium setup and ours. Um, and it's not a super, you know, it's not super big, but in the RV world, it's a decent size. And I know like if I'm running a hairdryer, if I'm running my air fryer, or my instant pot, right. like just, you know, I watch that. Now you, are they like, um, the same size of like a lead acid battery type? They're, they're a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. So they're yeah. like maybe a hundred They're hundred amp, amp hour batteries. Okay. How many yep. of those do you have? Four. And we'll be adding two more. All right. So 400 amp hours times 12 volts. That's, um, do the math. It? Come on, you're four an engineer. Four times one point, so four <laughs> kilowatt hours. Okay. So four thousand watt hours. This is hundred and eight thousand watt hours. Oh my gosh. So you can get a sense of scale. Right. That that represents in terms of what you can do, um, how yeah. much energy you have available. Traditionally, yeah. you know, everyone's worried about how long can I run? What mm -hmm. can I run? Well, this unit is two hundred forty volts all the time. So it's like, no matter where he goes, they it's they unplug or plug in. They actually have more power than they have. A normal 50 at the amp pedestal. at a 50 amp pedestal. Right, so right. So we've got two 5,000 watt inverters. So two um, 5,000 watt inverters. We have one 3,000 watt inverter. So it will it powers everything in the trailer. You can use anything uh, when you're unplugged. In fact, we've been unplugged since we got here on Saturday. Uh, we're yeah. pulling 5,000 watts continuously. But what all do you have running in so, there on this beautiful day in Florida? We were, the first day we were here, so Monday and then industry day, we couldn't figure out how much solar we were getting because the batteries were topped off at 100% and then they shut the solar controllers off. So we, we weren't able to calculate that. So yesterday and for the last couple of days, we've been running the air conditioners, the heated floors, the fireplace. To um, try to like, get some draw. The, the, a couple of people were like, well, maybe we should cook like a brisket in the oven or something. Right? Uh, Barbecue. Just, just, so tell me how many panels are on the roof? Each one of these represents two and they're okay. on each side. So you've got- 20 um, panels total. Yep. Okay. And then we have two more that we've got to install on the front when we get it back. So we're not even at full power yet. Wow. And then how many charge controllers with that many panels? I think we have three. We have three. Three charge three, controllers. Three uh, 125 amp yeah. uh, charge controllers. And we can show you that on the other side. Okay, yeah, awesome. Well, speaking of the other side, let's start walking around and let's take a look at the other side, but there's something really unique about this in the back. So you're gonna have to tell us about that because this is blowing my mind. Most people ask us if we do toy haulers. This one's actually a car hauler. So you can see here, when we go inside, the bed is actually down and there's still storage underneath. Um, the bed, the floor, nightstands, dresser, everything lifts up, and that's where you park your electric vehicle. And there's a, a port in there to start charging it while you're going down the road. Not only is this, I, don't know, I wouldn't even call it a toy hauler, this is like a true, true garage, but without that garage feel that you find in a lot of toy haulers, because it's like a legit bedroom, which we'll take a look at when we go inside. Yeah, this but is this the is second a... time we've done this. The first one was for a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, this one was for an XC40 uh, uh, Volvo EV that hasn't even come out yet. So hopefully they don't change specs on us. Right, you guys would be in a little bit of trouble if they did. <laughs> it's big though, so it can fit most anything. Yeah, which that's just amazing from the standpoint of I know one of the pain points right now with a lot of people that do have EVs is like Word there's charge. there's limited charging stations, yep. right? We basically created a big uh, transportable charging, charging station, station yes. right? Isn't that amazing? Harvester, power station, living quarters, everything in one one giant rig. That's awesome. I love it. It's awesome. Absolutely. I <laughs> love awesome. it. So cool. And you can get a good shot across all the different battery packs here. So there's four. Oh, wow. 27 kilowatt hours each. So all of the, this here the that's enclosed, these are all one the battery, big battery packs. Pack. Yep. And then above it is the galley tank for the kitchen. Okay. That's a stainless steel tank. This right yep. here. Yep. Oh, so, so, that's, the, that's so the water the tanks are stainless steel on this yes. versus like the plastic or I don't know what the material yep. is that they the, use traditionally. The, those tanks will probably last longer than the trailer. You know, and I will tell you, we've had so many stories and even people we know personally that have had so many problems with their waste tanks leaking, the seams leaking, the way that RV manufacturers install them, rubbing holes into their waste tanks and things like that just because they're made out of the plastic. So I don't think I've ever seen another manufacturer that does stainless steel on their waste tanks like that. 
I don't know. We, we, you don't we, know. We've done, like, I got we, nothing. We've, <laughs> done, we've done so many different things that for us, it's it, it's kind of crazy that some of this stuff becomes normal for us and for everybody else, it's really cool. The owner of this one would come into the factory and he'd walk into it and he's like, do you guys realize how amazing you are? And I'm like, well, we probably take it for granted. So it was really cool for the team to hear that um, we're able to do stuff that uh, nobody else is doing. Tell me about these buttons. So instead of your traditional like pull handles, you push a button, is that how that works? Okay. Yep. So there's no manual valves. That's all part of the design process. Both of these inverters, 5,000 each. Now they're synced to make 240 volts. So where traditional campgrounds would only be a single leg, 120 volts. Right, right. To be able to run all the these home appliances that you'll see in a minute and the inside, you need 240 volts for a lot of them. Gotcha. And so these are designed to sync up, create the 240 volts and split the 110. So it's like having that 50 amp big charge cord all the time. Gotcha. And, and then, then, so you guys are using the Victron components these there, are These like. are modified Victrons here okay. to work with our stuff. Okay. And then um, we are using three, um, I think they're 125 amp each um, solar controllers. Okay. And then I see your Bulldog. So you basically have like a built-in surge protector. What's going on with the, with That's the Bulldog? That's additional protection for gotcha. checking. I mean, you never know when you plug into shore power right. or what you're plugging into. Right, right. Um, it's just another layer of protection. Okay. Um, so instead of using like an external surge protector on the end of your electrical plug-in, it's just it's, it's built, built in. in. Yeah, this one, that's standard. Um, on our semi units. What's in this compartment here? So this is a mini split system. You can probably get in there uh, and see it. There's another, there's one of the fresh tanks. There's four of them on this unit. Four fresh tanks. Yeah, and remind me again, 400 what? 400 gallons. 400 gallons and then total. 120 on the truck. So and another 120. So 520 total gallons. That's just insane. Um, so mini split system, it's a residential HVAC unit. You've got the outdoor unit that has the compressor and runs the Freon, uh, gas and liquid up to the indoor units, okay. um, but very efficient. This one has four uh, indoor units on it. There's cassettes on the ceilings inside in the front bedroom, bathroom, the living room, the rear uh, bedroom. And then there's actually one uh, down here behind this setup that's uh, specifically for the batteries. So we can okay. air condition the batteries or heat them. Although you've got a built-in gotcha. heating system, um, we can do whatever we need to do to condition the batteries that and just keep them helps it with low, low temperature performance. Gotcha. So talk to me a little bit about a mini split system because that is something that we've gone back and forth with retrofitting to our RV, um, mainly from a power standpoint. So talk a little bit about like if you don't, like if you have a traditional rooftop AC, how much power is that using versus if you do retrofit to a mini split or have a mini split, what's the power consumption on that? First thing about how they run is they're, they've got larger expansion area, so for the evaporator cores, more surface area here, and then they're separated from the input and the output. So you can see the distance to get the heat out. So that's one of the first things about what I call a split. Okay. That gets your efficiency up. And then they run everything consumer world in 240 volts. That's why you don't see them in the RVs because campground infrastructure is all around 110 volt structure. Mm -hmm. So low energy, so they can't really run the compressors with the efficiency that they want. So it needs to be at 240 volts. From a from an energy standpoint, these are forty thousand BTUs. Is that right? Uh, that's a thirty-six thousand BTU unit here. We've got twelve, 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 and I think this one's seven. Okay, so for the same energy, you almost have two times more cooling tonnage. Gotcha. So they're almost double, but the amount of cooling capacity they have is so much greater for the same amount of energy. So that in this particular case, they're getting the efficiency. They might be running about the same amount of power you might hear on a traditional rooftop, but they have so much more cooling right. capability. You're, yeah, you're cooling all of this with that same, with the amount, same of amount of energy. Of energy. Yep. That is amazing. Love yeah. it. Uh, we actually, uh, in 2019, we did the first one. We only had a 18 kilowatt hour pack for yep. less than less than a quarter what's on this one, right? Uh, and normally we would get with a rooftop air 12 to 15 hours of runtime. They did the mini split on that unit and we got 24 hours of yeah, runtime on one charge. Wow. Just by running the mini split. That's awesome. Yeah. It's just, it's it's like mind blowing, but then like when you really think like, no, like this is, this is like possible. This is where we can do better just even from an RV industry perspective to really be able to equip people to go out there and to be off grid longer. Right. And you know, from an energy perspective, I know like, We've just dipped our toe kind of into the boondocking world, but realizing like how much fun it can really be when you can kind of get out of those traditional spaces um, 
and you know, especially you know, you bring some friends with you and everything. It can just be such a more yep. fun of an experience when you're not, you know, packed into the campground per se. You're not camping campground. You're not worrying about. I mean, from the standpoint of just camping, you get off grid. It's silent. I mean, if you're today, if you run a generator, you can hear it from miles around. Right. Um, if you're close to it, you hear you got the smell. Right. If you're even, yep. you know, yep. all those go away. You're out where you want to be. You're silent. It just makes the experience so much better. It gives you all that what, what you wanted at the campground, but gets you out where you're wanting to go at the same time. And that's because this big push in advanced energy technology that's helping bring the energy we needed to have the lifestyle we've been trying to build on a lot of these campers for a long time, but limited due to the amount of energy we could carry with us. We did one about three years ago that was probably about a third of what this one is, and they had a buddy plug. So they were out in California and they were getting their uh, electricity from the sun, uh, running their mini split system, and their neighbors were like, oh geez. And they're like, why don't you just plug into us? We've got extra power. So they were running two rigs. So they were running two rigs yes. off of one And totally system. improving the whole environment. Yep. You know, don't have right. to worry about the generator. Right. Just, just, just a better, better time RVing. And at the same time, you're being greener, more responsible. Yeah. Right, and I wouldn't have even thought about like a, a buddy plug. Like that's that's actually a really cool concept when you think about it. It's a good so. way to make friends. Right, exactly. It's like I need to be friends with them. <laughs> <laughs> so right about now you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's so luxurious. No way I could ever have that much luxury in my RV. Well, it's a little bit beyond our price range too, but one of the things that we found is there's actually a lot of ways to bring a little bit of luxury into your RV by just doing some simple upgrades. One of the simple upgrades we did last year was upgrading our RV toilet with more of a household style ceramic toilet and we got ours from e-trailer. One of the things that we love about getting these types of components and upgrades from e-trailer is that you can get on the phone with them, you can make sure that you're getting the right part for your RV because there's a lot of parts out there for different RV applications. And especially with something like a toilet in our case, well, we wanna make sure that we order the correct one. We're not having to ship something like that back. So we love eTrailer's customer service to be able to make sure we're getting what we need when we need it. Plus the fact that they have got a whole catalog full of different parts and accessories. It makes upgrading your RV to something a little bit more luxurious pretty darn simple. We'll have a link in the description below where you can check out eTrailer and see if maybe upgrading something might bring a little bit more luxury to your RV. Back to the video. So with this, it's designed to be towed with a semi-truck, correct? correct? Okay. We do travel trailers, fifth wheels, and semi units. This one's specifically designed for a semi. It's gonna be pulling it with a full class eight Volvo. Um, so it'll be a very nice vehicle. Again, we're integrating it with the truck so there's some uh, technology cameras, the water, um, electric, uh, that's gonna tie them both together with the company that we work with. Um, and then that's gonna get the customer everything they want. For some of our smaller semis, um, this one has heated tile floors and a quartz countertop, so the weight's a little bit heavy, but uh, for some of them, length and the overall build, you can pull with like a M2, um, a smaller uh, freight liner, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. That's closer mm -hmm. to a dually. Uh, right. Gives you that same feel, but it can still pull something like this. All right, so this is like absolutely amazing. And like once that door is closed, it's so quiet yeah. in here. So tell me how it is that this is so quiet, because traditionally like the joke is in an RV park, that if if you're like anybody can hear what's going on inside of an RV, but I kind of am getting the feeling that's not the that's case. That's not the here. case with this. So a lot of that is our quality. So starts with our chassis, but the way that we do our walls, the insulation. This has a spray foam uh, insulated roof. Okay. Um, so all of that helps to insulate not only from the heat and the cold, uh, but also from sound. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's pretty dang quiet in here right now. So okay, with the fridge, real fast, just because I'm curious. Is this then like a just full on residential yeah. fridge or, or is it a specific like 12 volt fridge? It's residential. residential. And no issues obviously with, because we've got all the power you yep. need. So you're not worried about. No, this is the first one we've done with the, the screen on the front. But uh, uh, for us, since we're full custom, it's usually the customer comes to us and tells us what they want. Um, we've got residential, all residential full size appliances in here. We've got a microwave, an induction cooktop, a convection oven, a full size uh, dishwasher here. Okay, hold on. I have to stop you there. 
full size yeah. dishwasher, not only a dishwasher. Correct. So normally we do like the Fisher and Pickell dish drawers and that's the typical stuff. Right, right. This is actually a full residential dishwasher like you would have in your home. I think this is nicer than the dishwasher I have in my home. <laughs> Um, we also have full size uh, washer dryer um, and all of this runs off of solar basically in the battery system. That is insane. And it really does go to show you like the technology is there if people would jump on board a little bit more, even with like homes, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, if all of this, essentially this is a home on wheels, but if all of this is being run off of the solar and we're not having to use any other energy source and we're running all of these full size appliances, just like a house, mm -hmm. then houses can be run on the same similar systems. Absolutely, and they actually have more surface area for, for more solar and uh, infrastructure to hold bigger battery systems. So batteries will continue to increase. It will be a natural progression, but uh, I think we're hopefully a good example of something that can be real today. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Okay, so tell me just a little bit about the like what you've got going on here. And, okay, and so uh, we have here. the fire, uh, Firefly system for multiplexing. Uh, we can do anything with the lights, the shades, the roof fans. Uh, a lot of information comes through on the 12 volt batteries for running all the 12 volt lighting and the 12 volt system. Um, it's always kind of fun. You can shut off all the lights at once or when you come in, you can turn all the lights on. So that's kind of a safety issue and kind yeah. of a convenience thing. Yep. Um, the blinds uh, we've got all throughout here, just hit uh, uh, one button. <gasps> oh my gosh. And this feels so high tech. All the shades everywhere flip from night shades to day shades. Ooh. Does ah. it work with a phone app? <laughs> yes. So you can do every, anything you can do on this. Uh, you can do from your phone anywhere in the world. It's a Wi-Fi system. So uh, this particular owner, owner, when he's storing it and not using it, he'll be able to control everything from his home. We're using the new Starlink uh, in uh, in motion uh, on this. The new in motion. So one. we've been uh, getting 200 megs of. Uh, uh, internet the entire time we've been here. So we've been streaming uh, uh, like four or 8K on the uh, TV from yeah. YouTube yeah. all day and it's don't even have to worry about it. That's cool. We we use this, we have a Starlink too, but it's not the new in motion one. It's the one that we have to, you know, put up and mm -hmm. then take down and, and put back up. So, but I do think it's cool just Starlink and the technology that's Oh, that's it's, with there, it's, it's so. been really exciting. So here right now we're just using 1600 watts. Um, the, uh, Mini split system has it, it's caught up, so it's not running full bore. Um, it still blows air when it's not moving. But you're not uh, plugged in right now either, right? We haven't been plugged in since Saturday. So yeah, we we sh we got here Saturday a uh, little afternoon, and we haven't been plugged in. Wow. Well, how many bathrooms do we have? One bathroom. Okay. Um, we can do anything: bath, bath and a half, two bath. I think we've done two and a half before. Okay. Successful business person that wants to be able to travel with his family all over the United States. They gotcha. do some world travel as well, but take his kids out and see the United States and uh, go anywhere that they want to. Right. And, and have that freedom. Have home. Yes, exactly. The home on wheels. Yep. Residential <laughs> feeling bathroom. Yeah. I mean, all of the um, cabinets feel just like that they. Like if you're looking at cabinets mm -hmm. in, in a house or whatever, I kind of like this because you know, most of these cabinets are like false, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so yeah, we try so, to, again, as I was talking about outside crafting space, we try to use every cubic inch. So you can put toothpaste in there, uh, brushes, whatever you want, Got right. full medicine cabinet. So, okay, I'm like here. Yep. Oh, this is nice. Like this is so solid too, like compared to Yes. You find another <laughs> RV. We'll have, we'll have 40 people at a time in here during the show and the trailer doesn't move. We've only got four landing gear. People wow. are just blown away. Yeah. That, cause yeah, you feel that definitely. On so a, I'll let you open RVs. the left, left side and. Oh my gosh. So this is your full size. Like this is, dude, this is like full size, full size. <laughs> it's about as big as I think they make them now. Yeah. I mean, it's like, this is, this is nothing different than you would find like in a house with 400 plus gallons of fresh water, you're not worried about Correct. like having to conserve on that. He has talked about putting a timer on the shower for his kids. We haven't necessarily figured that out yet, but uh, that'll that'll be something fun that they get to deal with. To my knowledge, we're the only towable company that's doing tile showers. So this is a full tile residential shower and the shower itself, the fixture's pretty crazy. Yeah, this is like, let it rain. Oh, and then this is actually like, it's like a, it's a it's barn like, door. Yeah, it's like a barn door slide. That is so cool. Very, very nice. Toilets in here. That's pretty traditional from an RV perspective. Yes. A uh, macerating toilet. 
Oh, okay. So the master reader's built mm -hmm. into it or whatever. Yep. So. So bedroom, we've got wardrobe in the slide, TV lift uh, here. Uh, since the TV lift uh, compresses the uh, cabinet a little bit, uh, the fun thing that uh, we worked out with her is she wanted some places for shoes. So you've got shoe storage here on some tip outs. Look at that. Um, so that was a creative thing that we all came up with to maximize the use of this space. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, is like when I, when I look at like, okay, how this was built out, it's like, this isn't that hard. No. I mean, it's it's like, you know, I mean, you got, you know, you got some extra pieces of, you know, cabinetry, you know, stuff there or whatever, but it's not, it's not like that that was really that difficult to, yeah. to, to do or whatever, but so simple, but so like just making the best use of space. It's very space. functional. Yeah. Our, our goal is to be as substantive or practical as we can be. Um, form does matter, but we want it to be usable for people out on the road because it's their life. Right. Right, and then cedar line closet, is yep. that what I'm seeing here? Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, too smooth. <laughs> um, there's also cedar lining in the uh, wardrobe drawers if you pull one of those out. Oh, nice. Amazing. Here. Yep. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So I mentioned that you would enjoy some of the uh, space things. Yes, um, so tell us about Do you that. like making the bed? No. <gasps> you bring the top of the bed to you you can make the bed, push it back. Then there's also hidden storage back there. Right. Um, that you can uh, use. Access whatever. a lot easier yeah. because the thing is, is traditionally with RV beds, yeah. it's like- Grab you... somebody by the ankles and let them fish back in there and grab it and pull them out. Yeah, yeah. But like without having to lift it up. Uh -huh. I mean, cause though, like these things can get heavy to try mm -hmm. to lift up to, you know, do the underneath I'll storage. I'll let you push it so... back so you can feel what that's like. Oh, it's like super simple. And then um, if you reach under here, We've got drawers that come yep. out. So full storage. So you can use every inch of space under the bed. And I will tell you, I would much rather have like versus the beds that tilt up on like struts. Mm -hmm. I would much rather have drawers. And we can do sleep number, uh, king, queen. Um, for us, since we're full custom, it, it really, customers tell us what they want. And our question is, what's the size? Um, because we just get it integrated into our CAD program and then we draw everything and you know Do you just need night shelves to maybe put a phone on or do you need a wider night shelf or a night stand for CPAP those kinds of mm -hmm. things? Mm -hmm. So that drives power and um, all of that is part of the design process to get exactly what you want Gotcha now you were telling me about this before we started filming and I was blown away So how much does something like this cost? So this one as designed is about 800,000 um, typically for our semi units, uh, it's going to be 7,500 to 8,500 per linear foot. Um, and that's a pretty good range for what our customers are really doing. Uh, obviously inflation is going to affect that going forward and in our fifth wheels. Um, it's 6,000 to 7,000 per linear foot. Um, it's skewed a little bit. There's some upgraded standard equipment, like a generator, those types of things on our semi, uh, but people also do more. So like this has heated tile floors throughout. Um, typically you're not going to see that on a fifth wheel. Um, so that, that skews that number a little bit, um, also. But when you think about it for that type of cost versus, you know, I mean, the big you, buses, yeah, you, yeah, you come inside this really building nice right stuff. behind us and you've got the custom Prevos mm -hmm. and, you know, some of the four travels and everything like that. This is actually less expensive with the full on solar setup mm -hmm. than one of those Prevo buses. And the fun thing, we always, since we're in the towable world, um, with the towable, you get more space. So generally speaking, throughout the entire uh, trailer, you're going to have a larger footprint and more living space, especially for a full timer. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to, to go with this platform. Is this a convertible sleeping space or no, it will just stay we could, static? But most of the time people are doing other things so they don't have to do transformer stuff. Gotcha. Um, we can do it. Um, but yeah, w these are actually sleeper sofas, twins. Okay. Uh, so that was part of what he wanted to do for children. Yep. Um, so we integrated those into the build. And again, he just told us what the size was and and then, as you can see, this slide was specifically built for that. For that, yeah. Uh, it actually then, almost looks like just like an oversized kind of chair, but yeah. there's a twin bed in there that yep. will fold out. And uh, they oppose and uh, meet here in the center. Nice. Uh, nice. Another thing that I didn't mention: trash compactor. 
That's fancy. So maximize uh, trash too when you're out on the road. Yeah, and... because especially the, the one thing with boondocking though that you that you have to think about is just a, from a waste management perspective. And so having something like a trash compactor where that'll yep. help minimize that. Pantry, we always have full pull out so you can use everything. We can do power like this one. So if you want a Keurig or something like that, you don't have to keep it out on your counter. You can keep it in here to maximize space on the uh, yes. countertops as well. <laughs> Yes. You've got the quartz backsplash on this one. Um, that's fun. We can do, uh, last year's we did for a Hollywood customer similar to this, but uh, all sorts of different backsplashes and things that uh, farm sink. Basically, a customer just comes to us. Mm -hmm. Pinterest is actually a, uh, one of our best friends and one of our biggest challenges. <laughs> Customers just send us pictures and they're like, recreate this. And right. we do. So yeah. that, that's a really cool thing. That's that's cool, and I can see where the, the challenge would lie in that too. You're like, dude, this is Pinterest. You know, you, you always see the fails out there, like right, in TikTok and stuff right. like that. I think we're one of the few companies that people will send us a picture and we do it better than the picture. Yeah. So it's that's that's fun. That's, that's cool. That's, Pinterest that's becomes the fail. We we uh, <laughs> we have such a great team, so um, I I'd, I'd put them up against anybody in the world. Yeah. That's awesome. I absolutely love it. So a 50 inch fireplace. Again, we were running that off the batteries yesterday. 65 inch TV. Uh, Bose surround sound. Does the does the fireplace so does it actually put out heat as well? Oh if yeah. You want it to put out heat? Oh yeah. It. Uh... <clears throat> How pretty is that? It, uh, I forget what it is. I think it's either eight or 10,000 BTUs. So for a small space like this, it will actually heat the whole trailer. Wow, that's impressive. For sure, impressive. So bedroom. Yes, so the here is bedroom. the bedroom slash garage. But now, unlike a lot of the toy haulers that you walk into, where you walk into the garage that people will convert into a bedroom mm -hmm. or use as kids sleeping space or something like that, this does not feel like a garage. And that was the intent. The first one we did, um, his wife wanted nothing. So they didn't have the side doors like this one does. And uh, we'll have the headboard up on here. We just didn't want to have it up because we knew we were going to be demoing. We'll have the um, the horizontal uh, pillow uh, headboard. So there's going to be, I think, 12 of those right there. So that whole wall is going to be padded headboard. Okay. Um, and you won't even be able to tell that this is a garage at that point because you won't even be able to see the ramp. Right. So with the headboard that's going to be there, but you still want to like bring the ramp down, will the, will the headboard stay... Like, so how will that work logistically so that you're not driving on the headboard? Um, it will, we'll put it on the, the bed. Here will be a good example. This is one of the hydraulic um, lifts. Is that, if this is, it's like a hidden thing. Yes. Wow. So if you look at the, this, mm -hmm. magnets. Oh, so seriously? the headboard will stick up with magnets. That's just magnets. Yep. It's not even like clicked in or, or no. like, it's just magnets. Yeah. Wow. It's easy to put on and take off, and um, uh, the necessity is the mother of invention. So uh, we uh, we did that, and it works very well. And you wouldn't even like, but these columns here, you wouldn't even know. No, like that. That's this. Just it just looks very aesthetically pleasing. And we'll have a desk that goes right here. Um, it will move out from underneath the overhead and tie to this to okay. go up. And then there's a threshold cover right there. You can't even tell that the floor is anything different when it's all set up um, wow. with the headboard and everything. Is this a televator? Yep, also a TV there. Gotcha. And then there was some storage that we saw in the back there uh, when we had the ramp down. Mm -hmm. uh, that's designed for an electric bike. And then he's gonna have another yeah. electric bike on the truck. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. For showing us around. I know that, um, I just, I don't know. I mean, this is really kind of a lot of like the wave of the future when it comes to RVing and what's possible and being able to just get out there and be off grid in a way that's sustainable and doable. Anyway, I just, I'm, just, I'm really excited <laughs> about it's just like There's... even possibilities for what this sort of technology means for just even what we've got going on with our own RV right now, let alone for, you know, other people mm -hmm. wanting to jump into this lifestyle. So, yep. And there's some fun stuff in the pipeline as well. So oh, it's, sure. we always get pushed every day. We get pushed to do something new and uh, do something that's never been done before. So yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks again. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you for it stopping good. by. Enjoy yeah. the show. Yes. Thanks. Thank you.